Morning, stranger. Hi, old timer. Guess you don't remember me. Can't say you do. Yet there's something mighty familiar about you. Well, Jake, I guess it's a long time since you taught me how to trap coyotes and ride rocks. Jerry Mason, as I live. <laughs> well, well, man, how you grown? Why, well, say, you're a regular mountain, ain't you? Ha, sit down here and let's talk it over. Well, there's not much to tell, Jake. Finished college and true to your dad's last request, you've come to live with me, huh? Yeah? That's right. I can't tell you how happy I am to see you. Well, I'm happy to be here, too, Jake. How about the ranch, the cattle? There ain't no cattle, son. Rustlers got most of them, and I sold what was left. Well, can we stock it up again? Or start in some other business? <laughs> Itching to get to work, eh? Well, I was figuring on opening up the blacksmith shop, but... What do you say we go in and fry us a chicken and gargle some coffee? What do you say, huh? Sounds like a good idea, especially that chicken. <laughs> this horse was limping. Well, got him fixed up? Yep. Hoss picked up sharp rock. No, no, they ain't no charge. Looks like you've been through plenty of water. Oh, yeah. Tried a shortcut about 12 miles back down there and got stuck. No. Oh. Had come right down through the middle of the creek. Hmm. And that's where he went lame. Well, good luck to you. Soon be here to live with me. Let's see what she's got to say. Dear Grandy, I just received my monthly check and thank you so much. I can't wait until school is over so I can come and live with you. Gee, just three months more and I'll be keeping house for you. Please write me a nice, long letter. I do so enjoy hearing from you. Lovingly, Betty. <laughs> She's a fine girl, Jerry. And I'm going to do everything I can to make her happy. Well, hello, Freddy. <laughs> She's hello. a town dog. Everybody feeds her. <laughs> Oh, so you want to play, eh? Say, Jake, yeah. take a look. That's that piece of quartz that came out of the horse's hoof. It's gold. See, there's a stringer in there bigger than a ten-penny nail. If we only knew where it came from. I do know. That prospector said he was forced down the middle of a creek 12 miles out. Well, there's only one creek out there, Jerry, and it'll be a cinch to backtrack it. Well, we're on our way right now, and if we find anything, I know a dog that's going to have a porterhouse steak and a home for life. You said it. Right there's where he left 
Mr. Craig. According to this sand, the creek's full of color. Hello. Hello, Benson. What can I do for you? In first place, do you fellas buy gold? Certainly. That's part of our business. Well, weigh this up and let's see what we got. Pure stuff. As good as I've ever seen. It's made a great strike somewhere. dollars an ounce. That'll come to eight hundred and forty-eight dollars. Okay, we'll take that in currency if it's just the same to you. Okay. All right, Joe. Now listen. We expect to bring in many times that amount. We think we've got a rich strike. But we don't want anybody to know anything about it. But you'll tell us, won't you? We're not telling anybody, Harris. But when we do get ready to let the location be known, You'll be the first ones in on it. Thanks. Come on, Jake. We got to go buy a dog a porterhouse steak. They've made a rich strike, and it's up to us to locate it. I wouldn't mind having old man Benson's ranch either. He used to run cattle. <laughs> of course, he doesn't know it, but I got most of them. It's a good thing we didn't file on that claim. It is a tip the whole town off to the location and can find our operation. As it is, we can work the whole creek. Yeah. Your idea of crossing Windy Flats and entering the town from the other side sure had them puzzled. <laughs> it sure has. They've been back trailing us now for two months, and they always get stuck at Windy Flats. They think this mine's out in the middle of the desert. Suppose we take a little rest, huh? Just a few more days and Betty will be coming. Well, don't you think we better be getting back and getting some of this dirt out of our hide? Yeah, I reckon you're right. You know, you want to sure look your best. <laughs> Everything. 
Hello, Jake. Hello, Hi. Jason. Well, what luck this time? Not so bad. <laughs> Not so bad. dollars an ounce that's uh, two thousand three hundred and thirty five dollars how do you have it in coin or bills well bills is easy to carry all right Joe sit down Jake I've got to have your signature this time Jake the government demands that I get a receipt for all monies paid out for raw gold sure but Joe Stamp the date on that, will you? There you are. And here's your money. Thanks. Give me my canteen, will you? I'll be seeing you fellas again mighty soon. Goodbye. Well, we got the deed to the ranch, and when he eventually disappears, we'll have this recorded. Let's see what we made on the nuggets. Well, how much did we get this time? $2,335. Woo! I'm going to hold out 500 of that. Pay on this blacksmith shop tomorrow. You know, Jerry, I got an idea this is going to be a valuable corner someday. And we ain't going to let go of it. I think it's a good investment, Jake. Gambling again, eh? Well, that's about all there is to do around this town. Gee, I wish I had a job. So do I. And remember, you can't keep this up forever. There's an end of everything. Hey, Al. Come here a minute. If you don't kick through that dough you owe me, I'm telling the town everything. That'll just about throw your old man out of office. Where am I going to get it? That's not up to me. I don't care where you get it or how you get it, but get it. Come in. Hi, Mr. William. Hi, uh, Jake. I'm glad to see you. I want to pay off my debt on the uh, Lexman shop. Well, that's fine. Sit down. Thanks. I'll give you a receipt for your money. 
We'll put it in the escrow. You'll get your deed in a few days. The claim coming. Oh, still coughing up a few colors. Won't be working it again the next spring, though. Howdy, sir. Hello, Engines. Better send for the doctor, Sheriff. It's too late. You've killed him, Jake. I killed him? You're not trying to deny it, are you? Didn't I hear you fighting? You were the only one in here, Mr. Benson. Somebody must have come in through the back door. That's the only way it could have happened. Don't worry, old timer. I'll have you out of here in no time. Why, well, yes. Are you Betty? And you're Jerry Mason. Well, why didn't you let us know you were coming today? Well, I wasn't surprised, Sandy. Why, well, where is he? Oh, uh... Well, uh... You see, when he gets out in the hills prospecting, why, uh... Well, it's pretty hard to tell when he is coming back. Won't you come in? Oh, gee. You don't know how glad I am to be here. But I just can't wait to see Grandy. Well, I'm going to ride out and see if I can locate him. Oh, I hope you find him. Now, just make yourself comfortable, Miss Betty. Well, thank you. And, and I have dinner ready for you when you come back. Well, that'll be great. Bye. Goodbye. this bank the once over. Well, uh, this may not mean anything, but uh, Al, the sheriff's son, has been flashing a roll of bills. Now, I know he hasn't done anything to earn it. He just paid me for a horse I sold him. <laughs> did Al Miller give you this money? He sure did. Where'd you get that money, Miller? Why, well, I don't think that's any of your business. Well, I'm making it my business because that's part of the money Jake Benson paid the banker. Now, just where did you get it? As I told you before, it's none of your business.
None of your business. Oh, no. I did it. I did it. Let me go. You hear that, boys? Jake is innocent. Wait a minute, then. If what you say is true, and my boy is guilty of this crime, I'll see that he gets the full penalty of the law. So here comes Mason now. Yeah, there he comes. Alton Miller, I arrest you for attempted murder and robbery. And I'm going to do my duty in helping to exact the full penalty for your crime. I'm sorry, Sheriff, that it had to be your son. Just how you feel. Here's the rest of the bank's money, Sheriff. That's the best dinner I've had in years. And that goes for me, too. 
Well, I can see it isn't going to be very hard to please you two. Well, son, we won't be working the mine again till next spring. You know, we can't afford to miss meals like this. I think I'll go out tomorrow and hide the sluice box. In fact, I'll stake out three claims along the creek, and you can file on them. After all, you know, better be on the safe side. And while you're gone, I'll take Betty around the ranch and show her the town and our blacksmiths. Sure. Yeah. And you can figure on me being here for dinner. All right, Grandpa. <laughs> this town is located about six miles off that spur. Whoa. Hey, Mason, can I see you a minute? Pardon me a moment, Betty. You know, they're taking young Miller over to Cedar City? Is that so? Yeah, and I thought you might like to know that Banker William is going to pull through okay. Well, that is good news. Yeah. Is Jake Benson around? Why, no. He went to his claim this morning. But he'll be back this afternoon. Oh. Thanks. Benson's out his claim, and he won't be back till late this afternoon. This is just what we've been waiting for. Friday, there's some nuggets that Jerry don't know nothing about. Ha! Won't he and Betty be surprised when they hear that? Come on, Friday. Out here just in time. <laughs> Drop your hands, Benson. We've decided it's about time you were tipping us off to this gold field of yours. Oh, so that's your game, eh? Well, Jerry and me found that gold field. We ain't tipping it off to nobody. He's done for. Yeah. There's a canteen on that patch. Come on, we've got to catch that mule. Sure enough.
can't get it. Well, come on. We've got to get out of here and get back to town. We can't afford to be seen here. Get your horse. Now, listen, Freddy. I want you to go get Jerry. You understand? Go, go get Jerry. Go get him. Till you hear from me, Betty. All right, Jerry. What's the matter, old timer? Are you all right? Oh, I'm only a little dizzy. I'm getting better every minute. They only nick me. What are you talking about? Who nicked you? I'll tell you all about it on the way home. Come on. Remember now, son, not a word to Betty. What I need is good feed. Oh, well, I'll run right up town and get you something nice then. Well, don't tell anyone that your granddad is here. All right. Hey, son, open up that trunk and get out my makeup case, will you? Makeup case? Yeah. This? That's right. This here will stop it bleeding. What in the world's this? Oh, that's just a souvenir of my old theatrical days. I didn't know you were an actor, Jake. Yep. I wore that when I played in a show called Charlie's Ant. Yeah? Yeah. Well, what the heck is this? Son, that's the thing that helped make Anna Held and Lillian Russell famous. Oh, I see. Up here like this, eh? No! Ha, <laughs> ha! You darn yearling, you got it in the wrong spot. <laughs> Hello, Mason. Has Benson come in yet? Not yet. If he doesn't get in by night, I'm going looking for him. I reckon he's horse through him. 
We just called to find out when we could take possession of this ranch. Take possession? I don't understand. Well, maybe Benson didn't tell you, but uh, we bought this ranch a few days ago. Oh, that's strange. Funny he didn't tell me. You got a bill of sale? Why, certainly. It's the office. Well, then I'll have Jake drop in tomorrow, and he can advise you when he's getting out. Well, that'll be fine. We're anxious to get started on the improvements on the place. Hey, what are they talking about? I ain't sold no ranch. Have you signed any papers lately, Jake? No, I don't think so. Wait a minute. Yes, I did. I signed a receipt for the money we got for them last nuggets. Well, did you look at it closely? No. Well, that's it, then. You probably signed a bill of sale for the ranch. That's why they were trying to get rid of you. They figured they could claim the ranch then and nobody could deny it. Well, that dirty, low-down polecat. But we'll get them. You wait till my headache's better tomorrow. We'll give them the surprise of their life. Hey, but you better go file on them claims. Take that canteen of nuggets and leave it at the bank this time. Here's the location of them three claims. Now, there's one for Betty, one for you, and one for me. All right. You better lie down and get some sleep, Jake. Don't you forget yourself. Remember, I'm supposed to be dead. Oh, I ain't forgetting. There's Mason. Isn't that old Jake's canteen on the saddle? Let's go see. Taking it off the burrow before we got there. How did we get there, boys? Oh, hello, hello, why? Uh, you see, Sheriff, we recognize this canteen. It belongs to old Jake Benson. Whenever Jake brought in his nuggets to us, unknown to anyone else, he brought them in this canteen. And we thought it was kind of funny that old Jake's disappeared and Mason should have this. Where is Mason? He went in the courthouse. Well, please go in there and see what Mason's doing. I reckon he can explain this. He better be able to. on the mining claim, Sheriff. Huh. Probably old Jake's claim. Well, we'll just wait till he gets here. Howdy, boys. What's all the powwow about? Just how did you come to have this canteen of nuggets? I don't care to answer that question, Harris. Whose claim are you just filing on, Mason? My own claim. Do you know anything about Jake Benson's disappearance? Yes, I know he hasn't come back. I'm sorry, Mason, but I'll have to hold you until we can locate Jake. Well, fair enough. When do I get my preliminary hearing? First thing tomorrow morning. You better take charge of those nuggets, Sheriff.
What are they going to do to me? They think you killed old Jake. They do. What's happened? What's wrong? Mason's up for murder. Murder? Yes. your granddad. Now, don't say anything to anyone, but hurry home and tell Jake that I have a preliminary hearing in the morning and for him to get there without being seen by anyone. All right, Jake. Bye. Jerry locked up in jail. What's that? They think he murdered you. Now, Jerry says he's been caught in the morning, and for you to be sure and get there without being seen. I understand. Yes. Will I be there? And how? <laughs> we figured out the way I said. Captain Chance, the world will leave. We'll be getting out of here. We'll close up the world. Yeah. Pardon me, gentlemen, but I'm looking for the courthouse. You're standing right in it, madam. Oh, for goodness sake. I do love murder trials, don't you? But if I were a murderer, I'd much prefer the electric chair than to have a rope around my neck, wouldn't you? Listen, lady, we're not interested. <laughs> But you're going to be. Well, here comes the sheriff and Mason now. My goodness, what big feet. <laughs> Just a minute, boy. Check your hardware. Omaha County is now open. Judge McGill presiding. Everybody be seated and come to immediate order. <clears throat> Your Honor, before you proceed further with this case, there's a few words I'd like to say. What is your name, madam? Veronica Mahitabo Benson. In a relation to Jake Benson? Oh, yes. I'm his dearest relative. What do you want to say, madam? I wanted to say that I've known the accused since he was a babe in arms. <laughs> Why, uh, please? As I was about to say, I knew him years ago, and he was the sweetest thing. <laughs> Come to the point, madam. Well, 
I know who shot Jake Benson. The men are in this court, Your Honor, and I advise the sheriff not to let anyone leave this room. They tried to steal his mine. They tried to steal his ranch. And they shot him down in cold blood. How do you know this, madam? Because I was there when it happened, Your Honor. Sheriff, swear Miss Benson in.
All right, now, folks, that looks fine. Now, just a minute. Relax for a minute. Now, here we go. You must remember that I spent most all of the afternoon trying to get you in position. Now, hold it. Just like that. Still, hold it, folks. Hold it! Ready now. 